Stalk it, shoot it, eat it, stuff it. Tim's chasing Kyla's around the forests of France. A healthy nation is a hunting nation. The European Parliament hears how hunting bans destroy wildlife and habitat. Plus, we've just come back from the gun trade show Iwa in Germany, the biggest in Europe. It all seems an awfully long way away, sitting in a pigeon hide in Somerset with my mate Jaff. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Late on day one, Tim shot this wild boar. Thankfully, it was a dead pig running and the dogs recovered it after it ran into the long stuff. Our guide and outfitter JP now wants Tim to shoot a tusker. That's going to require a bit more effort. Not that we're complaining. However, shooting one is proving a whole yes. different story. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, as, as, we, as we said this morning, the, we are playing a game. When you stalk them, it's a, it's another story. Well, it's, it's a proper, it's a proper, it's a proper challenge, and, that, and I think that's just wonderful. JP runs this French estate south of Paris, at the same time as running the French hunting magazine Chasse Internationale. He knows his onions, is that racist? And has brought all his international experience to the driven bird shooting and all the other driven game he offers here. It's very complicated when you, you take clients to Tajikistan or in Africa to have everything fits as you want and here in this place where I live it's much easier for me and it's easier for me to have a racing field with the keeper, with everybody. And I think we can provide very high quality uh, hunt here. It's the way they just come this. They hear this. <laughs> and they go. That's only everything around them. But it's just the, it's the way they run, it's the way they are, the way they look at you. Job. It's like really, really kind of something, something prehistoric, mystical. I do think that they're the most, one of the most fascinating animals I, I've hunted. What is it? With frustrations obvious, it's time to take a break, and JP wants to show us his taxidermist studio. 
It's not just any taxidermist. Here is the best taxidermist in France, where we win all our clients, all our trophies, because really they are producing the best quality about uh, shoulder mount, with uh, especially the eyes. They are the best in France. We'll, uh, we'll visit, just show you. And what makes a really professional mount? A professional mount is a, an animal, when you put it on the wall, especially the eyes, it looks natural, because in many trophy rooms, when you come to visit the place, animals are very uh, aggressive. And here, all the animals you can find here, they look really mm -hmm. natural, like they, we can find them in the wood. And that is making a huge difference compared to other taxidermists in France. The biggest piece of work on display is this grizzly. Impressive animal, isn't it? It is really an impressive, impressive animal. And uh, the owner of the place here, called uh, Damien, Damien Barbari, is the boss of this company. And he always uh, take care of the... Um, he always said, to, ask to the people, please uh, shoot the animal in winter time because you will get the best mm. fur than uh, in springtime. So this one is very, uh, like uh, we say in France, Isabel, Isabel color, like, like horses. I mean, uh, mm. this very uh, light brown it, color. It really nice Hunters hunt and for many reasons. Sometimes it's food, years, sometimes it's trophies, sometimes both. But most importantly, they both the give the animals world. value. Wildlife without value will suffer, and that's the important message regardless of what you think about shooting a leopard or a grizzly. Hunting one for a huge fee means 99 others will be protected. Wow. Express service. Express. <laughs> now from mounts to meat, and before our last boar outing, we have our last French supper at Lauberge with JP's fiancé, Désiré. So he's cooking the filet from the deer, um, and he's just giving first, uh, giving it some heat, and then he's going to put it on the, with the, the sep and in the oven just to give it the right, if you want it cooked well done or rare or medium. This is one of the hotels where hunting guests can stay. On offer this afternoon is locally shot venison with the mushrooms we picked earlier. Mm. Well done, Jeff. <laughs> Talking with food in my mouth now. <laughs> that is good. <laughs> right, fed and watered, we need to find our boar. This time we get lucky and the wind and the boar are in the right place. JP sets up Tim on the ride, anticipating the family will cross in front of us. It's a gamble, one snort and we'll be stuffed. We're about 80 metres away from the crossing point. Yes. Shot. Go for the... Wow. It seemed like half an hour, but um, I don't know how long it actually really was. Maybe 10 minutes. We were on some beasts over there, and they kept changing over, changing. Yes, no, yes, no. Then to our left, there's some more coming through. So we just started from over there, and the trees are in the way. And of course, um, our guide is looking from a slightly different angle. So he's saying, is the front one, middle one, rear one? 
it's a big one. Well, they all look quite big, quite honestly. So, uh, so he's kind of yes, shoot, shoot. Well, I, he said shoot it, but I couldn't see it because of the trees. And just that, not being able to take that shot. You know, one minute's fine, it moves, it moves, it moves, it moves, and, moves, and I'm for goodness sake. And as it as it as it gets longer and longer, you're, you're getting more and more tense. And go for goodness sake, can't I just, just present a, a proper shot? Most amazing experience, yes. <laughs> and I can sense, sense you guys, come on Tim, shoot it, shoot it. I can't, I can't see it, it's not me, it's moving, it's the trees in the way. You know, so, and then we, we waited our time, didn't we? Yeah, but we, you did well and we stand uh, maybe uh, eight to ten minutes there. Yeah, and it was... It was before there were, maybe we, we nearly shot at a small one. Yeah, yeah. There, another herd was there. All going on. <laughs> and <laughs> myself, I got the camera, plus the binocular. <laughs> and because what I was scared that when the female there saw us, yes, I said, well, oh yeah, I just I was saying in the camera, just please, 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 please don't. And, and the two big uh, bulls, you know, they they are always behind and they 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 really uh, they are um, they are very clever. So if they are from seen one, they will stay inside and don't move. It's a really nice wild boar, and we've earned it. <laughs> I think the weight is around 100 kilo. 100 kilo because he has a huge, huge body. I think even, even more. I think yeah? it's a very big, uh, very big wild boar. And here, it's incredible how the, the skin like that is so it's so uh, thick because it's a place where they fight the males together, they fight and they touch there. And when with your knife you can try it, try it with yeah. your knife to, to get in and you will see how hard it is. Okay. Bloody hell. That's tough isn't it? Yeah. Wow. If the bullet is not going through the animal, the trouble is with the grease the hole is going to, to be closed mm -hmm. and no blood will get out of here. You need a very hard yeah. bullet instead of a soft nose because mm -hmm. on such a wild boar you can have put a very good shot placement. The wild boar will get will run in a very sick places and you you will not find it without uh, the help of uh, uh, a special dog. So we got a 306, it's a Remington core lock. Yeah. Uh, and it's uh, 150 grain, so it's a lot of lots of hard round. So it's, it's designed to penetrate, so, and it's got a long way to go, you know. So it's got to go through, expand, yeah, and it's, it's done its job beautifully well here. Yeah, but it's um, I'm a bit surprised because it's a, quite a light bullet, mm -hmm. yeah. but it cross it cross the wild boar with uh, the exit is there, and you see, yeah, yeah. full of blood. So it means. So it may, it may have actually just been, you know, uh, yeah. It, it, the wild boar moved yes, just, 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 uh, just before you shot, yeah. but it was perfect. And from uh, the shot there, it's full of blood. So really the bullet performed very well because mm. it's... Um, uh, it's because in France, most of the time people use uh, 300 Winchester, 8 by 68, 93 by 62, a big caliber for wild boar because it's tough animal. And um, very good, I'm, I'm very surprised. It's uh, quite a light bullet and it crossed the wild boar. So it's uh, yep. perfect. Done the job. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been an absolute privilege hunting with you. Okay, yep. thank you. It was my pleasure. <laughs> Thanks very much. For more information about stalking boar or any other hunting with JP, go to wildboarhuntingfrance.com. For more information about Harkila clothing and accessories, go to harkila.com. And for information about Steyr rifles, go to steyrmanlicher.com. Thank you, Tim, thank you, JP, and thank you, Desire, from forest to fork. Talking of forests, it's the Gump version, and laugh is like a box of chocolates with David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. 
Poland may be about to ban hunting for the under 18s. A bill passing through its parliament was hijacked by anti-hunters and a clause banning hunting for under 18s was added. Now only the Senate and the President can stop the bill from becoming law. We won't fight about the new, uh, new, uh, new law and we have 50-50 chance uh, to change it. Uh, but I don't know what's happening. YouTube's gun channel termination scandal continues. A change in YouTube's algorithm led to a number of strikes against air gun channels. The channels affected are up and running again, but it's since affected some non-air gun channels, including US retail giant Brownells. Yeah, the human being part of YouTube is, is uh, working through it. The system is not in favor, is not helping us right now, put it that way. Animal rights activists stormed the Crufts dog show final at the weekend. The best in show winner, a whippet called Tease, was whisked to safety as protesters from Petter, Peter, whatever, ran into the ring brandishing posters reading Crufts Canine Eugenics. 21,000 dogs took part in Crufts this year. Crufts' best show dog, Gun Dog 2018, is an English pointer called Chili. Winner of the 2018 North Esk Memorial Trophy, the Basque Gamekeepers classes, is a flat coat called Black Micah's Likes It Hot at Black Toft, owned and handled by Helen Fox. Europe's largest shooting industry event, EWA, had plenty of new kit on show with Aimpoint's hunting simulator going mainstream. People may have already seen this very cool VR system doing the rounds, but we can reveal it'll soon be commercially available. Another optics company also using high-tech kit to promote their products was Zeiss with their new rangefinder. With our old one, we were happy to reach 1,300 meters. With this new one here, we can measure up to 2,300 meters. And the binocular get even smaller and lighter. The US Fish and Wildlife Service has relaxed Barack Obama's ban on trophy imports. It says it will now consider all permits for importing elephant trophies from African nations on a case-by-case -case basis. This means that trophy hunting may restart in some African countries, leading to a restoration of wildlife. And finally, British game shooters are helping songbirds long after the shooting season is over. Here is a cover crop filled with birds. Thanks to viewer Nicholas Jakes for sending it in. You are now up to date with Phil Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now, hunting in Africa is getting a real beasting at the moment, and it's got to stop because the only losers will be the wildlife. I've been off to Brussels to interview some people who do know what's going on and who are not choking on the mainstream media's fake news. In Africa right now, some countries are wildlife winners and some are wildlife losers. Let's start with a loser, Botswana. <laughs> This is part of a new film which is showing what's happening in a country that recently banned hunting. No wildlife. The wildlife winners are the countries that promote hunting. South Africa, Namibia and Zimbabwe. All this was laid bare at a conference in the European Parliament last week where I was helping out with the official TV interviews. So I'm about to go in and take part in the conference. I'm British and I'm a hunter. I don't know which they're going to dislike more. MEPs at the conference were surprised to learn that wicked old trophy hunting has been boosting wildlife populations all over the region in the last few decades. We need to put this across because politicians in the EU and the US increasingly interfere with African nature management by imposing or threatening to impose bans on importing hunting trophies. Here's a simple example of how the system works in South Africa. Briefly, the story of Bondabog is that in the 1925, we had exactly about 126 Bondabog left. And they were all in a small national park which was protected against any form of use. And over the years, the country grew that population from that 126 to today at about 8,000 Bondabog that are existing in South Africa. And guess what? Only a thousand actually belongs in that protected area where they were protected the first time. So what did we do there in that case? We simply, when we reached capacity in the national park, we moved some to the private landowners. And what did the landowners do? Take a certain percentage for hunting, 
and therefore bringing back money to conservation and growing the species to where almost 90% of the species now belongs into private hands, they're flourishing in the country and they are no longer need that protected areas where there's no hunting, therefore growing the population over and over. Are you, you're happy with that? We are very happy with that. The conference heard how African countries that embrace conservation hunting, that's the new nice way of saying trophy hunting, as their method of wildlife management, are getting far better results than the countries that do not. I'm sure if you look back at our history, Zimbabweans, locals, some African Zimbabweans, we are hunter-gatherers. Hunting is our culture and wildlife is our heritage. So as your heritage, no one would want to destroy their heritage. So we are here today because Zimbabweans, we are winners because of our sustainable utilization concept. And our, we will not move away from our principle. The conference heard how conservation hunting is keeping back the plague of poaching that's damaging wildlife populations. Now you said in the conference that uh, poaching was one of the real threats. It's, it's, it's come back in Namibia uh, and, and you need help. You need international help to combat it. Yeah. How, is, how is trophy hunting helping Naxo in the fight against poaching and illegal wildlife trafficking? Um, trophy hunting actually contributes for us to be able to employ. We have around 600 game guards. These are our ears uh, on the ground from communities that look after wildlife. At the same time, they work very closely with the with government um, to be able to report cases around you know, wildlife and especially poaching. So did the European Parliament hear this cry? from Africa to stop the hunting bans. Why wasn't half uh, of the Member of Parliament uh, in there represented by those who are against the way we do things? And, and as the uh, Zimbabwe ambassador said, we are the winners. We have wildlife that functions and those who are against us uh, want to destroy that. Why don't they engage with us or visit us in Africa? Engage, but they don't. They don't even appear at the conference here. And that's my life. NGOs don't I... appear, uh, they just don't. <laughs> We have to look where are our animals, where are our people who are in opposite to us. And I don't think it is the parliament. There are some who are fighting very hard, they are fighting very loud, but there are a dozen and more NGOs who come every week in Nuvan. I am surprising where they get all the money from. And uh, they make our members nervous and blow them up. And uh, so I think. We have to look around who is running around, who is making a dirty, uh, um, dirty uh, investment in the parliamentarian. Last word to Kari Umbwende, the Namibian ambassador to the EU and a great old stager from African politics over the last 50 years, to remind us why wildlife conservation is so important. I think is that uh, sustainable management of the resources, including uh, trophy hunting, has been good uh, not only to the community in terms of improving their standard of living, uh, not only to the economy in terms of uh, you know revenue for, for the state, uh, but also for the wildlife, uh, which is, um, while we say the wildlife in Namibia is a common heritage of humanity, it would be a pity if we will have a day where there would be no elephants or, or lions. Uh, and therefore, this is a strategy to make sure that these wildlife are conserved uh, for the good of the local community, but also for the good of humanity. Dragging MEPs, congressmen, commissioners and senators from across the Western world back from the brink of mass extinction through good intention is going to be a struggle. This conference, called Keep Calm and Let Africa Take the Lead, is just one step in the right direction. Thank you to Safari Club International, thanks to FACE, thanks to CIC and thanks to the ELO, which is, disappointingly, the European Landowners Organisation for putting all that together. Now, I can't leave this place without talking to Jaff, who's sitting over there about the pigeon shooting. Jaff, I was very struck by your lofting poles. Can you tell me uh, what, what they are? Well, they're just extendable poles, really. Um, they go at about five metres high. <laughs> Uh, 
um, come in really handy for getting pigeons up in the trees because pigeons don't always decoy into the pattern sometimes they just like sitting in the trees now if you can get them into the trees you shoot them as well as in the pattern why not you know um, um, they, they sit on a little hook oh, over on your right Well like done. I said, <laughs> they sit in the trees and you can shoot them out the trees, that you know. just flew straight yeah. in, <laughs> next to one of them. Yeah. The, the, the I mean, if we, can, if we can have them all day coming into the trees as well as a pattern, brilliant. Um, I mean, my advice to anyone is get a set of lofting poles, get a set of hooks, and stick some pigeons up in the trees as well, you know. How about getting them down afterwards? That's a difficult bit. <laughs> now, what I normally do is duct tape the pigeon to the hook so you can just hit the pigeon with the pole. But I've left me duct tape at home today. Oh, leave me duct tape yeah. behind, it's normal. So it's going to take a little while to get these out of the tree later, so never mind. <laughs> never mind, right, well let's not get in the way of any more shooting. Let's go from here to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube. It is Hunting YouTube. James to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. I have come back from Ewa having met lots of YouTube channel folk, old friends and new, and many recommendations for good channels. This one is called Bear Play, and the film is a trailer for a Swedish TV show it plans. I was pleased to meet Antoine from Le Chasseur Français, which is a massive French shooting magazine and a YouTube channel that's heading in the right direction. Here it shows kids hunting in the Bourges area of France. And there were lots of German hunting channels at Ewa. I met Carl from Yacht Total, who made this film about fox shooting in Germany. I also met up with the Rylman brothers from the Hunter Brothers channel and Andreas from Dreispross, both of whom I've shouted out in recent hunting YouTubes. British gun channel Rack and Load was terminated by YouTube, nobody knows why, and is now reinstated. Neil Rag, who runs it, is mightily relieved. Good to meet him. Staying on shows about Ewa, I enjoyed this from Cap and Ball, which is a look around the Holtz gun auction stand at Ewa and some amazing guns. Let's leave the tin shed behind and head for Ferry on the wet moors of North Yorkshire. Simon Whitehead has just put out this film. Viewer Jacob Ammon gets in touch about his channel. It has an extraordinary film on it about hunting in Dagestan. This one shows him out after bucks in Poland. And finally, the clay shooting season is just around the corner. Someone recommended this to me at Ewa. Award-winning South Down Gun Club has a new channel showing off all aspects of shooting, including this short film about how they are building a competition course. That's it for this week. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the I symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you'd like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link, charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, we're back next week. If you haven't done so already, please pop over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click to like us there on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. And best of all, you can pop your email address into our register page and we'll contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain. It's out 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday. And you can also go to our shares page, 20 £8,000 worth of shares sold so far. That's fieldsportschannel.tv slash shares. It only remains for me to say so that I can get back to the pigeon shooting. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>